And welcome back. Looking for a good read? Now a novelist, Wade Rouse, joins us this morning to discuss his latest. It's called The Clover Girls, but you're not going to find the book under Wade's name. Instead, he writes under the name Viola Shipman. Good morning, Wade. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We're uh, thrilled that you're here with us. Viola Shipman. Okay. Many people have pen names. Why did you choose that one? Well, the, the Viola Shipman is my grandmother's name, and I chose that pen name as a way to honor not only her, but all of our elders. You know, my grandmother was working poor. She was a seamstress. She sacrificed for me and my family to have a better life. And to me, it's the smallest thank you that I can give to her. And truly, her values um, and life sum up every book that I write. You know, it's um, all about family, our elders, and, you know, I think reminding all of us as we, as we know right now what matters most in life, and it's the simplest things, family, friends, and each other. That is a touching tribute, and it sounds like a, she was an incredible woman. Uh, I don't know if she's still around with you, but if she is, hi, Viola. Uh, the uh, themes of your latest book, The Clover Girls, uh, you, you said you talked about the elderly. Is the Clover Girls kind of like the Golden Girls? Are we talking about a group of elderly women? No, not at all. It's actually um, a group. It, the story revolves around four very different girls who meet at a summer camp in northern Michigan in the 1980s. The novel set in Glen Arbor, and over time they remain best friends despite you know all of the hard knocks that life throws at them. And you know it's truly an ode to friendship. It's an ode to forgiveness, not only I think of each other but mostly of ourselves. Um, it's a tribute to summer in Michigan, and to me, it, the, the book is really inspired by the loss of a couple of friends, including my father-in-law, um, to COVID. And it's you look at who's there for us in our lives right now, and it's our family and our friends, those who we need now more than ever. And I wanted to, you know, there's been a lot of books, love stories written about love, but I wanted to write a love story to friendship. Something that we could definitely use right now, uh, reinforcement of friendship as we've been so isolated for the past year. So is that something that readers are going to take away from this book, a, a sense of togetherness? That's, ex you know, that's exactly it. You know, you look, I look back at my life and my childhood friends are still some of my best friends. You know, people that know me better than anybody in the world, people that I've shared secrets with that I've not shared with anyone else. And they've been with me through thick and thin, and that's what I really wanted to explore in this novel. And, you know, as I said earlier, this book reminds people of, as, as we've learned this last year, what's most important in life, and that's each other. And I just can't reiterate that enough. And, you know, this is a book that I think is a perfect gift for your friends and coworkers and neighbors, and it truly celebrates summer in Michigan as well. Well, can't beat that. I'm not even a Michigan native, and I remember coming to Michigan for summer camp, maybe in the 80s. So this sounds like a book that I might be interested in as well. What, what's the audience that you're trying to reach? Is this uh, uh, grown-ups? Is this uh, youth? Uh, who, who's the audience? Yeah, you know, the beauty, I think the beauty of every novel that I write is that it's an intergen intergenerational book. And, you know, my, I grew up reading with my grandmothers. They taught me, um, you know, the love of writing and appreciation of words and, and reading. And these books can be shared between generations. Grandmothers can give them to granddaughters, um, mothers and sisters and best friends. But you know, it's really an adult audience that can be shared with any age. All right, now we're all whipped up into a frenzy. We wanna read the book. Where can we find it? Is it out yet or is there, are pre-orders available? It is. It's it's um, coming out on May 18th, but it's available for pre-order now wherever books are sold. You can go to my website, either wadeRouse.com or ViolaShipman.com. But I always say, you know, you have one of the best indie booksellers right in your backyard in, in Grand Rapids, um, Schuler Books. And, you know, our small businesses need support more than ever. So please give Schuler a call. Order books for Mother's Day. Pre-order at will. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, support them. They truly need it. That's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that. A great Mother's Day gift idea. And really quickly, Wade, uh, it says that you do spend a little bit of time in West Michigan. Authors tend to have certain places where they find their zen, right? They find their muse. Do you do most of your writing in Michigan? I'm just kind of hoping. 
I do. I do. You know, I moved to Michigan full time. I grew up in the Missouri Ozarks and I moved to Michigan full time in 2006. And I live in the Saugatuck Douglas area. And every single novel I write is set in a different resort town in Michigan. Mm. And to me, Michigan, the beauty of the state and its people is what I love to celebrate. And, you know, I've been honored that, you know, these these novels um, like the Clover Girls have been translated into 20 languages you know, been bestsellers in Germany and Russia and Spain and the Czech Republic. And people are really learning about and loving Michigan as much as I think we all do. So that's been, I've been happy and humbled by that. Well, let's get it on the bestseller list here in the States, shall we? Wade Rouse, coming soon, The Clover Girls. You can go to waderhouse.com, biolashipman.com. I love that you named the website after your grandmother as well, Wade. Wade, thank you so much for the time. Thanks for having me. And I say anybody that pre-orders, we're going to give some jelly bracelets out to you as a celebration to the 80s. Excellent. Sounds tasty. Thanks. We'll be right back.